Hey everybody, Jason here. I thought I would shoot a quick video today about radios. This is kind of like a part radio review, part how to set up your radio type video, and I just thought I'd do a quick one here. This, if you're an experienced racer, this probably won't benefit you all that much, but if you're a newbie, it probably will. And so for the first part of the video, I just got out my trusty, the radio I've been using forever now. This is a uh, Futaba 4PK Super. This is not the newest one, the new R version. Uh, it's the one in the middle. So Futaba had the 4PK, the 4PKS, and then the 4PKSR, which is actually a little bit higher end than this. And this has been a really good radio. Uh, I kind of put a little fancy steering wheel on here. I guess I'll give you a little quick look at that. Just a little disc brake in there and stuff. But uh, this radio has treated me really good. It really, it actually was not my first choice. When I got this radio, I really wanted an M11X. And my local uh, hobby store was out of them. And the owner made me a really good deal on this. So I bought this, I bought the nice aluminum Futaba case and I've actually been really uh, happy with it. Super, super happy with it. Um, but I thought I'd take you through a couple of the settings. Uh, when you're choosing a radio, there are a lot of things to choose. There are a lot of features that are probably pretty important. Of course, all the new radios today are gonna be 2.4 gigahertz and that's the way it should be. Uh, in the old days, uh, unless you're using like a ready to run radio, you're, you're going to have a 2.4 gigahertz radio. You definitely want to stay away from anything with the old chrome antennas because, uh, I mean, other than for just playing in your backyard, uh, that just, just is what you want. You can have interference issues and things like that. The days of crystals are long gone if you even know what I'm talking about. Um, but there are a few important features for any radio that you're going to race with. And the first one is endpoint adjustment. And so endpoint adjustment dual rate, throttle and steering exponential. You probably won't use steering exponential. Uh, and then ATL. And so this radio has all of those. So I will take a few seconds and I will show you how that works uh, in just a minute here. A couple of other things you wanna consider are, depending on the size of your hands, a lot of these radios these days can actually, they're actually little screw holes and they can adjust not only like, not only the, uh, maybe it's easier to see from the back, not only like the angle of the trigger, but they can adjust how hard the trigger pull becomes, like, like how firm the spring tension is. And they can actually also take this thing right here and you can move the whole trigger assembly all the way out. So you can, you can basically be in a situation where if you want the trigger a little bit closer, you can, or you can slide the whole thing. So, so if, you got, if you happen to have you know, gorilla paws or whatever, I guess gorillas don't have paws, but if you have gorilla paws, you can send the trigger way out. And if you've got little you know, rainbow bright girly hands, you can squeeze it way in. So whatever it is, it is. Um, so this radio obviously has all that and uh, let me show you what I'm talking about for ATL, EPA, dual rate and, and such. Okay, so I'm going to take a few seconds and I'll take you to the menus here on my uh, Futaba. Don't mind the dust a little bit. I never did take the plastic cover off some of this stuff. but uh, So this is my radio and I'm not sure how good you can see the screen but I'll make sure that you can here in just a little bit. I don't know why that was down. So as you can see, there's my model. And the way I have it set up is you can see, you know, basically how far your endpoints are. And then up here, see if we can see a little better. You can see the DR says 100 and ATL says 58. Now, if we go down to uh, endpoint, you can see that my steering left is at 89, right's at 84. And then I run the throttle always at 100 and the brake at 100. Now you can see that this radio actually goes up to 120. But I'm going to warn you, uh, some people think that it's a good idea to calibrate their speed controls using 120. But the downside is if you calculate your, if you, if you calibrate your speed control using 120, you may end up in a situation where the speed control just does not recognize the radio input or the radio is sending a signal that's just too much for the speed control. I do know for a specific fact that LRP speed controls are designed to be calibrated with the radio set at 100. Now, I can't tell you on a Spectrum or Airtronics or any of those other radios exactly if it's the same, but I would definitely take a look into it to make sure that you don't end up calibrating your stuff improperly. Now, endpoints are pretty simple. You just go ahead and you take your buggy and you turn the wheel all the way to the left and then you just dial it back until it's no longer binding until it just barely locks out and you do that for both sides. Now brakes, hmm, it's a little trickier. I set my brake at 100 on the radio, but I use something called ATL and that's 
adjustable throttle limiting, but on electric vehicles, that's only for the brake side. Now I have a little dial down here. This one controls dual rate and the bottom one, the top one's dual rate, the bottom one's ATL. Now, basically I can leave my brake at 100 and I can adjust it on the fly with my ATL. So technically that's 50% brake, 58, 64, wherever I want it. So ATL is brake side only for the speed control and dual rate, that's, that's basically once you set your endpoints and you have everything that goes lock left and lock right, dual rate just allows you to use a percentage of steering. So if your dual rate's at 100, the wheels will turn lock to lock both left and right. If the dual rate's at 90, the steering will only turn 90% left and 90% right. So one other function you might really want to consider is exponential. Exponential is right here. Throttle Expo, Steering Expo. Now, nobody I know uses Steering Expo, but a lot of people use Throttle Expo. And the reason is, basically, if you're on a slippery track, you can put some negative Expo in the car, and as you grab the throttle, it'll be more gentle earlier on in the band, and then as the car, as you squeeze the throttle more, full power will come on. Now, if you have a high traction track, sometimes you'll do exactly the opposite. You'll go ahead and you'll put a little bit of positive expo in there so the car just jumps right out of the corners. But generally speaking, I try to leave everything at zero, but if it's a little slippery, I'll definitely turn the expo down on the throttle. Other than that, there's a ton of functions a lot of these radios have with lap timers and all that kind of fancy stuff, but I don't know that you really need much or any of it other than dual rate, exponential, and uh, ATL. So that's about that. Okay, well there you have it. We talked a little bit about dual rate, a little bit about EPA, uh, ATL, uh, exponential, all that stuff. Basically, your radio, outside of having the perfect tires, your radio is probably the, the next most important thing to get set up right. You probably can have your speed control off just a little bit and you can really tune with the radio. I don't think enough racers out there pay close enough attention to really fine tuning the way their car handles with their radio. These ra we pay a lot of money for these things. I mean, this one alone was you know, right around 500 bucks. If you're gonna spend the money and it has the features, try to learn how to take advantage of those when you're out there on the racetrack. I'm sure that it'll make a difference for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this video and uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.